why I've decided I'm not going to be using a vapor barrier at the house in France. Um, several reasons really. One, with the age of the house and the type of construction of the house, I'm not entirely sure, I'm not entirely convinced that it needs a vapor barrier. I think the house needs to be able to breathe, um, which I'm not sure it will do if, you put, if you're coating plastic all the way around it, the internals between the insulation and the plasterboard. I know it's a big thing at the moment. Everybody wants to um, have these sort of airtight properties, but I'm not convinced that airtight is exactly the way to go. I think if you're creating heat within a house anyway, and you've got decent ventilation, that should, in theory, keep the house dry. Now, this house will be, I'll be using a wood burner to heat the entire the entirety of the house the idea behind the insulation being that that will hold the heat in place um, particularly upstairs the house that I built in Normandy um, worked particularly well we did actually clad it was a new build uh, so a slightly different system um, but it was it was all in block work and it had exterior insulation uh, quite thick insulation on the outside of the house but it, it just held the heat so well and we never ever had any problems with um, humidity in that house so all right so this isn't the same thing this is an old house isn't a house that's probably dating back to the 1880s built from a timber frame an oak frame and uh, with a cob infill for the walls so cob being the mixture of soil and straw and the certain parts of it where they've added lime um, and that's the large, uh, large gable wall is, is that as well mainly it's mainly uh, soil flint uh, straw and a bit of lime so it needs to breathe as far as i'm concerned the house needs to breathe um, and i don't think it, it's going to achieve that if i'm wrapping it in plastic um, there seems to be at the moment there seems to be more problems with airtight houses actually creating condensation problems than there are fixing them and with this house with it being uh, like i said with it being in, in cob and when you looked upstairs when we were doing when i did the woodworm treatment the amazing thing was obviously downstairs the guy had his fuel burner probably on full whack all the time I don't think he did a great deal in, the, in his late, later years. Okay, so he's got that going. So that kind of that kind of um, heating is going to create, I imagine, a fair amount of moisture in the air. Okay, um, he probably never opened the window, um, and it, so downstairs it was kind of riddled with woodworm where the the, um, the insects and that had gone in. Upstairs in the loft, there was practically no evidence at all at all of woodworm. Now, that suggests that you've got this big open space, very well ventilated, all right, it had holes in it because the rain um, was getting in where the, the roof had deteriorated over donkey's years. But even with all that being said, the fact that the house is something like 150 years old and because there was, wasn't a problem of humidity in the loft space because of the ventilation, um, I'm thinking that's for me that's the way forward to not put a vapor barrier in um, and with that the there should be sufficient airflow within the loft area the loft area is fairly fairly small now because obviously the bedrooms have been put in place and um, there's a space between the rafters where the rafters connect with the roof the, the tiles and where the insulation ends so you'll always have an airflow running between um, each rafter and we've got the breathable membrane as well so that should ensure that that keeps the timbers dry the insulation i'm hoping will hold in the heat and because i'm using a wood burner and it tends to be it tends to create more of a dry heat than a, 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 a wet heat if that makes sense um, Anybody that's burnt wood, um, use wood burners or Paul Le Bois or whatever you want to call them, I think would agree with me with that. It's a dry heat and it does pull a lot of air out of the room as well. So you do need ventilation anyway if you've got a wood burner in place. 
Now, the old wood burner that was there, it had a large six inch ventilation or 15 centimeter ventilation at the rear of it. Um, I'm going to move slightly position of the wood burner to slightly more centrally on, on that exterior wall and replace the, the old vent with a new vent, obviously at the rear of uh, the wood burner. So we'll be drawing air in, we'll be heating that air, and hopefully we won't be creating too much moisture that will then get trapped. And if I'm not using uh, the barrier, the vapor barrier, which I won't be using, and I know, like I said, lots of people have commented and saying, oh, you really should do, you need to think about this and that and the next thing. I've given it a lot of thought. And for me, it's, it's better, for me, better not to use. Now, another example, just off the top of my head, when, we, when I first started in the construction industry, and we started doing a bit of brickwork, we were on site. At that time, they talked about you needed to leave a gap between the insulation and the outside skin, the outside wall, because if not, it would, um, it would soak up, it would wick, and you would have moisture that would work its way from the inside, from the outside rather, inside, okay? After um, a couple of years, all that changed. All of a sudden, it didn't matter, it wouldn't wick you could put the insulation tight and they found that it was better or they, they assumed that it was better to have the insulation so there's no air gap at all then between the internal wall and the external wall. And it's like all these things, these things change. So at the moment, vapour barriers are the big thing. And I'd imagine in certain parts of the world, maybe it's a necessary thing, particularly on newer builds. Um, but they're still talking about you need to have good ventilation. I think good ventilation is the key to all of this. It isn't the fact that you're trying to create an airtight environment, which can't be good for you anyway. Imagine, you know, it's bad enough being on a plane where you've got to sort of recirculated air going around, which is horrible, and to, to living in that in your own house. So um, that's the, the reason why, one of the many reasons why I'm not using the vapour barrier. So is anybody going to give me an alternative argument? I mean, it's too late anyway, because there won't be a vapour barrier put in there. Um, I won't be retrospectively fitting a vapour barrier. It's done. It's done and dusted. My decision is made. And obviously, I will keep uh, tabs on how the house progresses over the next year or two, which would suggest um, whether I'm correct in my, my proposals or whether I've been a complete fool. Personally, I think I'm correct. You might disagree. Anyway, that's my reasoning. Um, thanks ever so much for taking the time to listen to an old boy prattle on about vapour barriers and the need for, the need not for. And I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.